let us solve a problem. Say we have a container containing two liquids. Let's say this liquid is of density rho 1, this liquid is of density rho 2. By observation we can say that rho 1 is less than rho 2, hence this liquid is floating over this liquid. We also have a small body at this junction of these two liquids. Let's say this is of density rho. It is immersed by say this these heights h2 in this liquid and h1 or let's say we have h1 here and h2 here, height let's say is h1 and this height is h2. Now let's say we find out a few quantities. Say we have to find out the net force on the body due to the liquids. Next we have to arrange rho, rho 1, rho 2 in increasing order of magnitude. And third, say we have to find out rho in terms of the other quantities. This is our problem. Say the cross sectional area of the body is constant and is A. Let us try solving this question. For the first part, let us consider the body separately. This body, if we draw the free body diagram of it, we will have a weight acting downwards, we will have the force due to the pressure from the bottom and a force due to the pressure from the top. For the top part, let us write the expression of the force due to the pressure. This, let us say this is P due to 1, let us say we write this as FP, FP due to 1. This is going to be equal to the pressure part we write as PATM because say the atmospheric pressure say is PATM. FP1 is going to be PATM plus the pressure exerted by this height of the liquid rho 1. So this is going to be rho 1 times this height which is going to be h1 minus small h1 into g. This is the pressure. This times the cross sectional area is going to give me the force in the downward direction. Say fp2 which is this is in the upward direction and is going to be first term is let's say PATM plus 
the pressure due to the height of this fluid which is rho 1 into h1 into g plus the pressure due to this height which is going to be rho 2 into small h2 into g. This multiplied with the area, cross sectional area will give me the force in the upward direction due to the pressure exerted by these two fluids. The weight is nothing but the density of the body times its cross sectional area into the net height of the body times g. This is always in the downward direction. So these are the forces. Considering the body in equilibrium at this state, if we balance of the forces, we will have Fp1 plus W getting equal to Fp2. Let us now simplify this. We wrote that W plus FP2, sorry, FP1 plus F, sorry, equal to FP2 is our force balance equation, which is rho of the body times the volume it occupies, giving us the mass, times G giving us the weight, plus FP1, which was PATM plus rho 1 times capital H1 minus small h1 times g into cross-sectional area. This getting equal to Fp2, which is PATM plus rho 1 times capital H1 into g plus rho 2 times small h2 into g times the area. We see this gets cancelled off on both sides. PATM also gets cancelled off from both sides. What we are left with is rho times h1 plus h2 is equal to say rho 1 h1 g plus rho 2 small h2 g minus rho 1 capital H1 minus small h1. Sorry, the g has been eliminated already. So this is what we have. If we simplify this, this is what we have, which gives us rather the answer to the third part of the problem. Therefore, we have rho as rho 1 h1 plus rho 2 h2 by h1 plus h2. If we consider the net force due to the fluid, which is the first part of our question, F net due to the liquid is going to be equal to this minus this if we consider the net force to be in the upward direction, which is the case because it has to balance the weight. So Fp2 minus Fp1, which is nothing but rho 1 times g 
times h1 plus rho 2 times g times h2 this getting multiplied with the cross sectional area note that this is the fluid volume or the fluid uh, mass displaced fluid weight displaced by this part of the body and this is the mass of the fluid dis displaced by this part of the body so basically the sum of the fluid weights displaced is the net force by the liquid on this body this quantity let's analyze this quantity which was the third part of our question we got rho getting equal to rho 1 times h1 plus rho 2 times h2 getting divided by h1 plus h2 let us multiply capital a on both sides sorry on the numerator as well as the denominator we will have now then rho 1 times v1 say plus rho 2 times v2 divided by the net volume of the body this v is nothing but v1 plus v2 this expression in general holds for all such cases this is applicable for any such setup which has two fluids or multiple fluids and a body immersed in this fashion this in general is going to hold note that this holds for all cases which means the cross sectional area might also vary but this is still going to be valid now coming to the second part of our question the second part of our question was to arrange these quantities rho 1 rho 2 rho 2 and rho in increasing order of magnitude if this setup is in equilibrium we can say the heaviest part settles down at the bottom or the densest part settles, settles down at the bottom then the intermediary part then the lighter part so we will have rho 1 being the lightest or the least followed by rho followed by rho 2 So this solves our question. Let us browse through this question again. The first part said that we had to find the net force due to the liquid on this body, which is nothing but the sum of the weights displaced of the two liquids by this body, which is rho 1 into h1 into the cross-sectional area into g, the weight of the fluid displaced by this part of the body plus the weight of the fluid displaced by this part of the body which is nothing but rho 2 into h2 into the cross sectional area a into g this is the net force due to the liquid this balances off this quantity which is the weight of the body itself when this is balancing of this we get this which is yielding us this result and because of this setup being in equilibrium we have this condition which answers the second part of our question 